Yeah, I know something's wrong with that. Actually, I think it was at the clock. I, I mentioned how right? much I like the six o'clock meeting format. I do. Welcome to the uh, Town of Litchfield Selectman Board of Selectmen's meeting. We're just uh, getting out of uh, paperwork review and manifest uh, signatures. And uh, first up, let's pledge allegiance to the flag. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first on the agenda is review of items for consent. Do you have any concerns with the items in consent? Um, Mr. Chairman, did you want to remove the minutes of January 28th from items of the consent? I was just going to abstain from the whole vote. Okay. Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, that the Board of Selectmen approves all items listed under consent. I'll but, second that. Yeah, motion and a second. Second. Any discussion? And just so there's clear, the reason why I'm, I'm going to abstain is because I wasn't here for the minutes on the 28th, but everything else in the packet is fine with me. All right, all, no discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Um, <laughs> failed to say one. So four, zero, one. Thank you. All right. Um, <clears throat> any other any 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 other business we want to put on the agenda for tonight? Um, there were three things that I wanted, but I think Jason's going to address. The issue on the AED, right? I can touch on all three of those issues. So, okay. we'll, put them, we'll just put them in his report and he can do it that way? That's fine. And then the, the minute minutes updates, and then the AED, and then the insurance uh, letter, right? Yeah, I'll let you speak to minutes. Part That's of minutes, fine. yep. Okay. Um, and I also want to add to the agenda um, just a, a update to the the board regarding some budget committee council and interactions been going on um, regarding the last deliberative session. We'll talk about that real brief. Okay, any, nothing else? All right, moving on. We have a, a guest tonight. Before Matt, it's uh, Larry. Leahy. 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 Yes. Matt Leahy from the office of Senator Senator, Senator Shaheen. Yes. Uh, Good evening. Thank you. Um, my name is Matt Leahy. I work for Senator Shaheen. I'm based up in her Manchester office. Um, and I actually don't have a particular agenda or issues I wanted to raise with the board. I'm here basically just to introduce myself um, to all of you and to, to uh, the town. Um, you know, in case issues come up involving the federal government, either in, you know impacting the town as a whole or maybe um, affecting one of your constituents, you know, maybe a Medicare case or Social Security, IRS, um, and you need uh, someone in, in the Senator's office as a point of contact, you can definitely use me as that point of contact. Um, again, questions, uh, you know, obviously the, the issues involving the federal government seem to come up an awful lot. <laughs> Um, so, again, if there's any questions, um, if you think the senator should know about an issue or maybe it can be helpful, you know, please feel free to, to get in touch with me. And I can, we have, you know, a lot of different staff who handle various particular issues, but you can kind of use me as that lead in and I can help direct the issues to where they can best be addressed. And I did bring a copy of my business card, which I'll leave um, before I leave okay. with you. So. That's basically, that's all I'm here, just to introduce myself. Um, so if, if citizens of Litchfield wish to uh, communicate with the senator's office, uh, can you, we're on television, yeah. I'm asking if you can provide for the people listening maybe how they would do that? Uh, best way, and actually I also brought with me um, a little flyer that lists all the senator's offices and addresses okay. and, and such. But basically the best way, you know, a couple of ways, you know, call our office up in Manchester. 647-7500 um, is the phone number there. Um, I mean, that's probably the, you know, probably the easiest and most direct way, although, you know, we understand people do like to email, um, which is why, I, again, I'll leave my, um, my cards with you. Um, and this is, I'll also 
This also has the uh, Senator, uh, Senator Sheen's website address too, which kind of gives a lead in on how you can follow up with anything particular okay. as well. So uh, <coughs> www.sheen.senate.gov um, is the website address. Okay. So, and I'll I'll leave that. Leave that, and we can we can post yep. it on our site. Yep. Okay. Yep. So basically, that's that's why I'm here. Um, okay. Again, I'll leave my my business cards, um, and you can uh, again if anything comes up. Please let me know. Well, thank you for stopping by. Yep, you're welcome. Does anybody on the board have any questions or anything? No? Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, thank, thank you, you again. Yeah, thanks a lot. I have appreciate a good your evening. time. Drive safe. I will. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Especially in Litchfield. <laughs> thank you very much. And, uh, you Jason. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Great. Good. Good. Thanks thank for you coming in. Much. Appreciate yeah. you for stopping by. Yep. Thank you. All right, next up is public input. Seeing no public, I'll close public input. Next on the agenda is cable committee, capital plan and revolving fund use. So basically a budget review and some of their um, projects they're gonna work on this year. Good evening, Dick, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. So just a little bit of a context. I asked, when I met with Dick and his team, I asked them to come forward as if they were proposing the budget. As everybody knows, their budget's funded by the, the uh, Franchise fee, so it's really off budget at this point. But I think it's important for the board to understand what the direction of the committee is, how they want to use those funds, and you know, have us be on board and, and kind of direct if we can direct in the sense of what we think some of the priorities need to be, if there are any that outside <coughs> of what you're already working on. So that's sort of the context here. Yeah, I guess I just would point out that you know that move to the revolving fund was approved at last year's town meeting and had an effective date of January one. Yeah. Um, so, um, no. no, the board is agents to expand. Right, and yeah. the board are okay. the board are agents to expand after January. So the ultimate responsibility for expenditures. Are right, your office. So this, so this is why you see a budget. This is why you didn't see a budget through the fall, is because it lives separate from the budget that's on the ballot as a revolving fund. Mm -hmm. Remember too that last year when um, we lowered the franchise fee, part of the reason for lowering it was to target uh, income level that we expected to be around 50,000 per year. The idea being about 25 for operations and about 25 for equipment. Mm -hmm. um, now, bearing in mind that the other thing, because it's a revolving fund, is whatever balance is there at the end of the year carries forward to a future year. So you know the the theory may may well be that okay in a given year you may not spend fifty because you may save part of it toward a larger expense in a future year. So that's sort of the budget mechanics behind this, and that's why you're seeing it now. What are you saying, no fun? I'm not. I'm just shaking my head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so with that. That's the context, I think, for where, where this budget sits now in our new process. Everybody has copies? Yeah. Just if you can reference which one you're going to talk on first, that'd be good because this spreadsheet, I think, would be. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we'll go through the, the spreadsheet first. Um, the items that are different this year are the telephone internet access. Um, we underfunded that line item last year. Um, we overexpended about $1,800. We haven't changed anything in the internet structure in the three facilities that we're maintaining, which is here, uh, Campbell High School in the studio. We have static IP addresses that were required for our equipment. Um, Take a second and study for a second. Yep. The town hall one has been, it is a cancellation order in place. Okay, yeah. The issue that I have is that uh, a member of the committee signed a three-year contract right. with Comcast. So right. I'm, I'm, we're, I'm in the process of getting that, get rid, of, get rid right. of it. So that will go away. Good. I would suggest we leave it there, but um, I would expect that you're not gonna fund, you're gonna spend that because yeah, it's it's just there because right now that's what we're paying. Correct. Right. Right. Uh, the other item, oh, Software services, that's, we pay $3,000 a year for the PEG Central, which is the um, internet streaming service that we use for our meetings. Now that's in the IT budget though, it's not in the, it's not in the cable budget. 
Right, Jason? Uh, Except what I thought was in the IT budget. <coughs> Let me look and see, because I, th I it ping-ponged around. I'm not sure where it ultimately landed, so let me do a quick I, check here. I think it's still there. I'm going to go up, double check. That's what I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. Uh, nope, we took it out of the revised budget. So we don't need to? Uh, no, so it is not in our budget, right? It is, it is not in the budget for right now. So it's not in the town budget? It's not in the town budget right now. What's your thought? Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now that's in there. No, it's it's stay, right now it's staying in your budget. In right, right, right budget. now it right, needs right. to be in, okay. yeah, so really be in your budget. Okay. Um, office supplies, that stays the same. Um, capital repairs and maintenance, or electricity and heat, uh, I don't see us changing that. Um, we've had the uh, air conditioning system since last year, so I don't see us having to change that line item. Um, building repairs and maintenance last year, we spent over $6,000 to put in the air conditioning system. This year, we're, we'd like to get the building painted. I've been working with Kevin to try to get that resolved, but um, <coughs> you know they were trying to use some state workers, uh, probably prisoners, I think, to help with that. But I think that has been withdrawn. Right. Is that currently withdrawn right now? So um, we still need to get the building painted. So that's why that um, $1,600 is in there. Is that going to uh, cover just the paint, or does that cover more than just paint? Uh, scraping it all? Yeah, I'm hoping it's going to cover all of that, scraping and painting. I mean, that's the idea, is to just get it, get it done. Is that lead paint underneath? I would hope not. I mean, the building that isn't that old. Not that Later, old. Uh, yeah. Yeah. that was later. Uh, that was. I don't think. It's only probably yeah. five. Or six, I remember when that was. Uh, it's probably older than that, but it's it's. Uh, it's not it's as old as this building, is it? Uh, probably it was about the same time. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, yeah. It's about the turn of about two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, capital uh, equipment repairs and maintenance. We're leaving that item the same. Um, same with minor tools and supplies. And the last item is equipment purchases. <coughs> so if you look at uh, page four of the breakout, the Word document, it itemizes the um, items that we're looking at purchasing. We're looking at a flat panel monitor for here. Um, so rather than use a projector, you'd have a flat panel monitor. And the number two item is a wireless HD computer to TV uh, kit for wireless streaming. So what you'd have is a basically it's a USB device with a little antenna on it. And you can plug it into any laptop if you're giving a presentation. And, and then there's another device that plugs into the flat panel so that you can wirelessly stream presentations. Um, we're looking, number three, we're looking at uh, getting Adobe Premiere to load on our editing system. The application that we have on there is no longer being supported by the company. Uh, software is old, but the computer is still in great shape. So we just would like to get some software for that. Um, we're also looking at the possibility of being able to do remote events. That's the kind of thing that we haven't been able to do and we're starting to look at trying to fund that so we can get some kind of interest in some other events. Some, some, th some things we were thinking about are the Memorial Day proceedings. If we had a fly pack out there, we could stream that uh, presentation live and record it and then play it back on the channels. Um, other events, sometimes we get last minute requests to do large meetings in the gyms of the various schools. Um, other other events that don't occur either in the auditorium at Campbell High School or in the media room there. Um, like spring concerts and things like at the elementary or the yeah, middle school? Yeah, you know, anything like that. Um, again, you know, we're trying to get some equipment infrastructure in place and get some interest going. Um, Sean Blanchett is doing a uh, sophomore project at his high school for uh, doing public access 
events and things like that. And, and, and we're trying to get him to develop some interest in the school so some other kids might want to get involved and maybe do some programming so we can get a public access program started here. Um, so he's looking at doing that as part of his sophomore project. I was thinking of the Eagle Scout Award. Yeah. That was very Yeah, there's lots of, lots of little things that <laughs> happen in town that would be good to, yeah. to record those. Um, <clears throat> number five is more advanced titling capabilities to give us a little bit more um, flexibility with the types of uh, messaging that we can put on crawls and inserts and things like that to just try to get our look a little bit more um, interesting so that we get some maybe get some better viewership um, the recorders for the cameras up to this point have been tapes and the new way of doing it is to have a have a, a field pack that digitizes the signal right to uh, MPEG-4 file, which can be easily dropped into a computer and edited. And uh, you can record for much longer periods of time on this drive that bolts right to the camera in the, on the uh, accessory shoe. So we're looking at getting one of those for uh, one of our remote cameras. The two cameras in question are the Canon GL2 field cameras, and the batteries are pretty much dead on those, which is item number eight, seven. So we'd like to replace those batteries. And then right now at Campbell High School, number eight, we have a four-channel switcher, but we've got eight cameras that we A, B switch into those. And um, we'd like the ability to be able to get all of the cameras just put into one switcher um, to de decrease complexity in how that system operates. And that would get us going for a while. Okay. Do you have any questions? Is Dick, have you looked at, <clears throat> I happened to see one working the other day, that's why I know about it. Instead of the, um, instead of the flat screen monitor, Hitachi makes a uh, projector. Mm -hmm. It has a very short throw, and they had it mounted right to the wall, projecting down. They didn't have to mount it on the ceiling, and then they had all of the cables run into it and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we have actually a few of those at work. Yeah, and they got them with wireless technology. So, in other words, you know, for example, if Jason was looking over budget stuff, he could connect into it wirelessly. I would think and mm -hmm. do it that way. Yeah, I mean, would that make better? Would that? I'm just wondering whether that would make better sense than a. Um, a flat screen. I don't know what the, crop, the, the price difference, differences are. So I can look at that. Uh, I know that a lot of the uh, public access <clears throat> facilities, town halls, they're using flat panels. That seems to be what most people are using. Yeah. The, um, the challenge with projectors is the bulbs, too. When the bulb fails, the bulb is very expensive. Right. These bulbs, is, I, I think the number on them, they said, was something like uh, the bulb life is like Three to five thousand hours or something. Four thousand hours hybrid filter. Something like that. Yeah, I certainly can look into that. Three thousand hours uh, lamp life, and they also have one in econo mode, five thousand hours. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just I was just wondering whether it would uh, work out uh, work out um, better. I know the the big complaint that we had was when we had the projector here, um, the microphones were picking it up. Yeah, once on the table? Yeah. I mean, the thought was, when we were talking about it, when the, when the idea came up about putting a, the monitor up, it would take the place of that whiteboard, and slide down that way. <coughs> that's kind of that's, it's actually something we can look at, and then the public can look at also. But a projector would work there, too, if it could be mounted up in the wall, like you suggested. Well, and, and that's what they had done, and, and I was, I'm just looking at that wall simply because it's a bigger area or whatever. Yeah. And they have um, what they call shot throw right. yeah. um, lenses, I guess, which allow you to focus. Yep. I don't know much about them, but I, yep, did, I, did, see, I did see one. Okay. Any other questions? One thousand four hundred and sixty-three dollars if I find it on one website. 
Yeah. I don't so know how, I don't pr know how price wise, it's, it's equivalent probably at this point. Yeah. Right? Between the mounts, the whatever makes sense. But I just mm -hmm. look into this. Okay. Does this have to be approved? Yep. So moved. The motion. To Do I have a second? Second. Any other discussion? How much are yeah. we approving? <laughs> So we're approving the bottom line of $38,541 that is coming directly from the uh, revolving fund from the franchise fees. Right. And you plan on getting about 50000 for fees? Yeah. Yeah. Approximately. Yeah, that's about approximately what we get every year. Yeah. Right now, anyway. Yeah. Um, no, I mean... The, well, the franchise fees was one hundred twenty thousand, wasn't it? It, well, we, it we, used to be. Yeah, we well, when we it was lowered. Oh, I know we reduced <coughs> it, but I just wanted to make sure people. Yeah, the, the that. new oh, yeah. the new lower rate is was picked to yield around fifty thousand. Right, a year. we're collecting what we think we can, what we need to do the capital improvements, the maintenance, and the, and the actual operations mm -hmm. versus taking has, a whole lump sum in and doing whatever else with it. Has the economy affected people with cable? No, not that much. I think it's. I mean, it's affected everything. I mean, people are cutting back on, on all kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. But it it has been a slow. I mean, it is a continual growth yeah. each quarter when we get those checks in. Now, you know, <coughs> sometimes the the difference is only a couple thousand dollars over yeah. previous quarter. But you know, mm -hmm. the numbers have gone up every quarter I've been here. Really. Of course, the amount went down that we were, right. they were taken out. So, of course, that would make a difference, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Five, zero, zero. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for all your work. I think that there should be a something that you should be able to take out of these fees. I know that you do have to put in a lot of volunteer time. I think well, it's well, great to volunteer, but there is enough for the, you know, we're yeah, that's, we have a line item in there and that we have people that, you know, that record the meetings and they get paid for that. Yeah, they get paid, but how about you? Well, the work that you do? No? That's volunteer. Yeah. I have a For question, yep. and that question is, I saw on your documents that you're going to expand next year, um, expand the services or whatever next year. Can you talk a little bit about if, what you're planning on? Oh, the, um, we've been trying to get other committees to record their meetings, and thankfully to the Board of Selectmen, you've put out a, uh, a requirement that by, was it May of 2014, that all committees, all public meetings are going to be recorded and that's one of the things we're looking at staffing up for that so that's on the horizon are there any additional committees you'll start next year do you think or additional committees that'll be started gee i don't know okay we haven't even approached that one yet huh? hopefully <coughs> i didn't know if some people had called you and were looking to nobody's asked us <laughs> okay yeah, but yeah i'm to jump into it but yeah. if they do we'll be there Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Next up. Next up is the administrator report. New right. business. New business. Um, had uh, received uh, six proposals for legal services as of um, Friday, the due date. I provided all of those uh, to you. Uh, the six firms that submitted were uh, Mitchell Municipal Group, Tarbell and Brodich, Hage Hodes, Divine Milmet Branch, Donahue Tucker and Shindella, and Upton and Hatfield. Um, they, uh, there's a, they've offered a variety of rates, probably from $125 an hour on the low end to $275 an hour on the high end. So you have a, across that group. Um, I can say that of, with the exception of Upton and Hatfield, um, now as you go forward with this, thank you. I've nice. worked there. with many of the attorneys in these firms over the years, so 
um, at a point that you may be looking for some perspective, I'm happy to offer that. Um, curious so, what your preference for narrowing this mm -hmm. next steps would be. So I, I, my thoughts around this, and if the board agrees, we'll, we'll go this way, but I think everyone should take, should take a look at the packets that are available. By the end of next, by the end of next week, send back a sort of rating, one, two, three, four, five. Jason, I think you should do the same thing. Um, obviously, you've had some interaction with some of these folks also, so your opinion and feedback would be would be warranted. I think we need to make narrow it down to three, and that our next meeting, which will be the 20 25th, I think. 25th, we'll make a decision, or at least hopefully come to a decision. Now, that, that, now Jay, our current council is okay with the team supporting us the way he's supporting us. We don't have any issues there between now and then. So I think giving us a little bit of time to kind of go through the content we have, understanding who these who these these services are being provided by, and then making that. There's no sense jumping into it tonight and say making a decision. So is there any objection to that? No, I've worked with some of those. Currently work with okay. so two, I said just, two of the firms. Just send it off to Jason and I, just one, two, three, four, five, and your preferences as far as which. Or six, whatever. It is, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm just curious. No, you're right. I only counted five when I looked at it briefly. Well, it's PTC Hatro. Yeah, one through one through you're right. X. <laughs> so one through six. At your preference, everybody do it. Get it to Jason and I, and then we'll 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 take the top three, and then we'll use that as our our discussion point at the next meeting to try to come to a decision. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Next. Um. Sorry, I got to look back and forth here. Okay, mosquito control, uh, mosquito control district. Uh, we have received a resignation from John Poulos, uh, resigning from the mosquito control district. It's too bad. Didn't he just didn't he just get reappointed? No, he is. Yeah, no? his term was through fifteen, I think. Okay. Have we received anything from the chair with regards to the resignation? Has he acknowledged it? Um, he acknowledged it to, I saw an email that went back to John on it. Okay. Um, I don't think it was directed back to, uh, the board. Okay. I mean, it's unfortunate. I mean, Mr. Poulos has done a lot of work for the town in the past couple of years, many years actually. And I think his service to the community should be. You know, much appreciated, at least from my perspective. I know, I know that we all appreciate the work he's done, and I'm sure the Mosquito Control District also shares that. So I guess I'll make a motion that we accept Mr. Poulos's resignation with regret. Second. Second. Or third. Fourth. Any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, I think it would be nice if we sent um, a thank you a thank you letter for all of the hard work that he has done. I've already requested that uh, Jason has already put a letter up. We'll have it. I think is it ready for a signature tonight. It's not for tonight, but I'll have it available. So if the board's if the board's okay with it, I will sign it once it's ready to go, mm -hmm. and we'll get it to him. Okay. But I totally agree. I think uh, you know, as I've always said before, I think the folks that volunteer in this community are the backbone. <coughs> um, we couldn't do it alone, and I agree. Um, you know, it's like I said, it's with regret he's resigning, but I also kind of understand when. Time becomes a problem. <laughs> I get it. All right, any other discussion? Any other comments? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5-0-0. Zero, zero. And as I said, when once the letter's ready, I'll sign it. We'll get it to John. Um, and again, once, you know, if, if you <coughs> watch it, we appreciate all your effort and your help over the years, and sad to see you leave the position at this point. I will point out that he is continuing on as a trustee of Get. Trust funds. So. We appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I actually thought about whether or not, if we all voted against, if he'd be stuck helping us out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just wouldn't do it, right? Oh, well, he probably would. All right. Um, next up is the voter information flyer. Just as a quick heads, I, you know, after deliberative of the school and the town and stuff, I, Jason and I started working on, and actually more Jason than anybody else, trying to formulate all the content we have. I think it's going to be really important this year to have a spot on information rich. Um, flyer. Um, so, Jason, I know you have. The yeah, I, I have two things. So, I mean, the, the the first is the technical piece. So, before we get into the substance of it, 
uh, you know, we're reaching the point where we need to compile and distribute. You know, what we've done is we actually reprint the ballot as a sample ballot and then put sort of a narrative <coughs> explaining the articles next to it. So, uh, you know, that yeah, as much detail as you can give in two sentences next to it. Um, we've usually done this via the HLN, mm -hmm. and I wanted to throw out as food for thought. Um, last last fall, the planning board used the uh, postal service has a new every mailbox service that they use for distribution of their survey that hits every every household in town. Price wise, we found that it was basically they were all in the same price by the time we printed and posted posted it versus doing an insert. Um, any preference? Continue in the same way uh, with a with the HLN insert. Try the postal service every mailbox piece. I'm, Mr. Tim, mm -hmm. I'm I'm just thinking out loud that would would the taxpayer going to their mailbox um, be apt to identify that as a helpful item for voting if it's folded and you know could it be mistaken for a piece of mm -hmm. junk mail? Whereas in the HLN. They open it, 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 it's there, it falls out and there it is. Um, I don't know, I don't yeah, know what well, are format. You saying, are you saying the voters don't identify the HLN as junk man? I didn't, I am not <laughs> going there, Mr. Byard. What I'm trying to, I just would like to make it as identifiable to the voter as possible, uh, as a service to them. I, I will, I, one other piece of context I should probably put into this that I've unfortunately it occurred to me just now as we're saying it is that when you fold it up as a piece of mail you need to commit one panel to the generic address and the post right. you know the box up in the corner when you do a full HLN flyer you don't lose any panel space yeah, because say, it's all correct. an insert that may just answer that the may have answered our question See, you know you open well, it there it is the, the, other, the other thing is um, the lead time for getting those printed up at HLN, unless you select a vendor to do the printing of them outside of HLN, is usually um, a couple weeks. So if we're coming up on a March 8th, I think it is election? 12th, 12th, 12th. 12th then we need to have it in the next See, week I, or so. I dropped, there's a certain other municipality that does that, and I dropped that municipality's off at Staples today. They do 1800 for us. Uh, front and back staple and then we give it to the newspaper right. they stuff it in for us for a fee right and 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 that's what we discovered last year actually that um, the <coughs> printer we use for like town report printing and some of those things was able to print them cheaper and faster for us yeah so um, that said we so what, what is the deadline going to be though because I think uh, you know I, my assumption was by the 25th we have to be done and Gone yeah, I was going to say by the end of next week. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't think you could go beyond the middle of next week. Yeah, I, I'm, in my mind, I'm trying to get this wrapped up next week. Okay. Um, so I can get it out of here and I'm not cutting it tight on deadlines. Um, so if we're going to go forward with the HLN, then the second piece is the content to accompany all of this. Um, and so I've shared w um, what I tried to cobble together. In some ways, this was grabbed from the presentations we made at the deliberative session um, and again you know as much insight as I can provide in two to three sentences so I'm looking for some feedback on this because you know this is just kind of what I cranked out on all of that um, you know especially those of you who may have spoken to an article uh, <coughs> if you have any ways that you want to edit amend um, I'd love that feedback. Well, you spoke to the articles. You only gave me the boring articles. Yeah. All right, great. This trust yeah. fund, this revolving well, fund. Well, I mean, I think I'd like, to, I'd like to add references to the website information, too. So in, oh. the case of, in the case of the presentation, one of the things that I'm trying to accomplish is to actually have the presentation and the video side by side with a reference link so that they actually can go there and actually see the presentation as it was being delivered. <coughs> uh, we can if we can potentially include that there too. Although, like I said, that probably I'm probably biting off more than I can. Well, um, <coughs> on the flyer, 
we have the sample ballot. Yep. We have a little box at the top that says, you know, remember, vote Campbell High School, times, date, all of that. My thought there had been if we wanted to direct people for to further book. information to the website, we'll, we'll dump right it there. in that info box. Okay. And then we paste all the rest of these through. And again, I, I mean, I would do the same thing. We did not put in anything. Um, and this is the other question is, you know, are we, I, my list omits the planning articles altogether because those weren't the selectmen's articles. Uh, well, I think it, it depends and how on, do you want me to handle that? To me, it depends on the page layout. If you've got to add extra pages just to do that, then I can potentially agree with you on it. But mm -hmm. if it's going to fit within, a lot of times you end up with three pages, which is crazy. So then you, need, you can use the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I think you need to. It's going to be an eight. What size paper is it going to be? It's eleven, by, um, 11 17? by seventeen. So I bet you if you can do. Um, Nine nine font. Well, but but do four <laughs> columns across. The the um, <clears throat> I will tell you that um, usually. It, we, we, I mean, it, I know you worked with me on this last year, Frank, and we had a heck of a time trying to shoehorn everything in. Mm -hmm. Because usually, usually, you you end up with the word of the warrant article on one column, mm -hmm. and then the rest of the page contains the explanation across from the side of on the side of it. At least I, that's my recollection One, of it. Two, three. I don't remember what last year's looked like. Yeah, I mean, we we need the we need three full. We have three, or like, okay, better two, yeah. two but, and a third, two and two thirds. Because I'm looking at the sample ballot, two and two thirds paid ballot pages covering the 18 articles. And the other thing, which was driving somebody crazy last year, I won't go into the details on that was the pagination because remember that yes okay well I, I, when I look at all the articles I think it's gonna be real important to understand or to tell people what the tax impact is and for example the operating budget one doesn't have the tax impact in it oh no look at that no it doesn't yeah no. didn't, didn't all the other ones do but didn't we take actually now that I think of it didn't we take <coughs> 11 by 17 and fold it in half that's what I thought we did. Yeah, that's what we and did. Then, and then yep. we had two columns per half, right? No, we, we had the, the we folded it in half. So the seventeen was folded in half. Yeah. And then we had page one. You opened it up. That had to be page two, mm -hmm. page three, and, page and then page four. four. So page four and page one were on the same side. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I mean, so you're looking for some help with the with the wordings. I mean, what I've seen so far in the the draft, it's pretty straight, straightforward. Is everyone take? Is anyone ta Is everybody take? Has everybody taken a look? Or if no one's taken a look yep. yet, can we? No, I did. Okay. Yeah. If anybody has any feedback, can we get feedback by tomorrow afternoon, so that Jason can, can finish trying to put this together? I'm also. Okay. That would okay. be great. And then I will lay it out and then try to. Oh, you're not plugged in there? Plugged in. Looks like it just did a reboot. <laughs> Don't turn it off. <laughs> because if you do, it's it may not come back. Yeah, it's no. installing long stuff. Um, I, what I'll do right uh, as well, just for your own uh, reference, if you haven't kept your souvenir copy of last year's insert, um, uh, it out? yeah, I just I just shared it with all of you. Okay. So if you want to take a look at last year's, just to remember how it. Fit. Yeah. It out. Okay. And uh, the space challenge, the space challenge we had last year with a ballot that was shorter. Space the final frontier. Yeah. Last well, year's because you're putting a copy of the ballot on there too, right? Yeah, so we're putting the sample ballot on there. That's too. gonna be all the warrants and everything. This one, mm -hmm. so that's gonna take up two pages right there. Yep. Yeah. Last year that took up. Can we shrink it though? Do we have guys? Can we can we take it and try to fit it all in one page, but by shrinking it? So first page, the two page ballot is shifted like this. It's still it represented. It's a copy <laughs> of it, but it's just right. not full size. Sure. 
I mean, we can. Um, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know how. We can try. I mean, the, the, the challenge on all of this is, and that's why I'm trying to get, if I can get the copy to bed and people are okay with that, I got to fight the layout next, so I don't want to keep, you know. Well, I think, like I said, I think the format is fine. The content you have in there is fine. I like to make sure that we do include, you know, make sure that every warrant that it was appropriation based does have the tax impact. Um, I think you you know you make you, you, in each one of them you're describing why why we're where we're at what the major impacts are, that's fine. I think Article Four that may need a little bit more, but we can talk through that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. but you should be including in there Articles One, the election of election offices, of offices, right? Um, we just had in, in, like using last year as a uh, reference. It was just part of the sample. Ballot. Last year, using last year as a reference, we began our narrative at Article Four, because with the sample ballot being shown, we covered, we showed Article One, which is the the election of officers. We did not do any description last year for uh, the planning articles two and three for definition of multifamily and accessory dwelling. Our narrative started at Article Four. So using last yep. year, Looking that's why I kind of I started down that same path again this year. Okay. Yeah, let's look right here. Well, that that is right there. I have some suggestions. Right, it's right here. Um, yeah, it's just one help with right the layout. If but we don't need to do that in the middle of the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, having spent some time earlier in my career in a publishing company. There are some tools one can use to really fit whatever size we want. The trick is being making sure that even Brent can read it. <coughs> All right, appreciate it. Yeah, like I said, let, let's try to get it so it's put to bed before you know, this week. Okay, great. Let's just talk about the icy thing. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Um, your concern for me is you want you the one who said one day that I printed my document too small so that well, so this would actually <laughs> this would be in the paper the Friday prior to the election so that's what I'm targeting okay whatever you do don't rely on Saturday delivery <laughs> well it takes your lunch so it'll be Friday anyway, yep. so. so that's that's what I'm targeting for it all right anything else on the voter information flyer work all right we'll move it on to workers Workers comp renewal. Workers, workers comp renewal. This is um, at this point, it's simply a heads up on this. Uh, Primex is offering a contribution assurance program, uh, which they've done in the past, where you can lock in a maximum rate increase for two years. So this would be for the 14 and 15 renewal, a maximum increase of 8% for each year renewal. Um, did that last time. Yeah, you probably did that two or three years ago. That was the last cycle mm -hmm. that they did this. Um, we just have no problems on workers' comp with Primex in terms of their service. They've been helpful when needed. Uh, you'll recall last year we um, received their Prime 3 certification through the uh, work of Joint Loss Management Committee. So that has controlled the growth of rates as well. Um, and this is the one line of pooled insurance that Primex has been returning surplus to its members. Um, remember, we have a premium holiday this year of about $13,000. Uh, I attached the documents on this um, in part because the last page of the loss mitigation agreement, mitigation agreement um, made me kind of, you know, want to make sure that we, you know, I want, was comfortable recommending this. Uh, part of that la part of that requirement is a requirement to send multiple people to a variety of their trainings. So sending, pe I think, like four people to a supervisor's academy, um, three people to their <coughs> human resources academy, uh, which becomes a large commitment of staff time. <coughs> For instance, the supervisor's academy is four days. Mm. So you multiply that out. Um, you know, the HR Academy, I'm kind of struggling to figure out where I'm going to get three employees. Where I have three employees that it's relevant for. You know, um, I have one it's very relevant for who, outside of their recommendations, I would be scheduling to send anyway. What but, if we didn't send anybody? What happens? Uh, then we're not, then we lose our eligibility. So, I mean, part of the commitment is, 
And, and, you know, and I understand that. I mean, on their end, it's, you know, managing their risk exposure, and they believe that this is the way that you do that. You know, you make fewer bad HR decisions if you have HR people who understand what the rules of the game are. So I, you know, th that said, um, it's also as good a time as any to look at the other pool, uh, which is uh, run through uh, LGC for comparison. So, um, you know, I'm, I am getting a price from them to add into the mix for us to consider. So when's this, when does when our existing plan expire? Our existing plan uh, expires in December. However, Primex, in order to lock in the contribution assurance program, would like an answer by beginning of March from us. Okay. And we'll have an LGC comparison? We'll have an LGC comparison next week. Okay. That's, so I've been gathering up all the stuff that they need to quote it for us. All right, so let's put it on to the 25th. Yeah, meeting. it'll be on the next meeting. So. Um, do all towns have the same amount of requirements? In other words, or is it based on size of the town? I would figure it's like probably four based. Four seems like an awful lot for Litchfield. I would figure it's based on the size of town. You know, I mean, and they actually, in mean, the Supervisors Academy, they actually um, you know, said, well, we want one from police, one from town hall, one from fire, and one from the highway department. So um, I'm not sure that all of that is the best use of our time and resource, of our resources and some of our departments. And those so. four days for each one of them? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, let's, see, well, let's see if LGC has similar requirements. Mm. Yeah. I can't imagine that they wouldn't, but. But then they lock it in for only two years, you said? Yeah, and... we, we lock in a maximum price increase for two years. So yeah, but then they're jumping again probably four times more than that at the time the end of the two years are up. Boy, they're rip off, I think. <laughs> So when you come up with the cost estimates, you're going to throw in the cost of the attendance? I'll try to cobble in some so you can at least try to have an apples-to-apples -apples comparison with Because there is yeah. no cost to go. It's, it's our, obviously we're paying yeah. these employees. To Tuition's go. free. It's yeah. just it's the, it's, it's the time, time commitment. Yeah. Lost, lost uh, productivity. productivity. Right. It, well, it's, it's lost productivity in the office per se, but we're not necessarily incurring substantial out-of-pocket other costs. Because we're already paying these people, so there's an incremental cost of lost work in the office. But we're not actually. Well, it's not like you have to replace them. It's not like a public safety. Right. Correct. Thing. So your cost is not repl no, replacement cost. It's well, well maybe in the police it, department. Well, or fire I mean, department. I, I think well, that's actually, what I'm saying. If, if I, you had shift people, you'd have to replace them. But. You know, and I need to explore a little bit more with them. We have, uh, we have at least one, if not two, people from the police department who've been through their course. So I may, be at, so I, I may be able to. Yeah count that um, you know, and then figuring out in the other departments yeah it will be interesting okay so um, just to so let you know I'm working so on that comparison get us another example yep. and then we'll discuss it on the 25th yep. or whatever our next meeting I think is 28th 25th 25th yeah okay. 11 and 14 is 25 it is 25th yep so I've been saying the right thing all night <laughs> Uh, code red. Uh, part of the budget, we uh, approved uh, the uh, rollout of notification system uh, called code red. Uh, the fire chief, police chief, town clerk, and I uh, completed our training on February 6th. So we are now able to use all of the messaging features. Now you know, this is, you know, this is the system similar to what the school has built for. Um, it's uh, it's students and their parents. So the, the layers of you can call your phone, and if you've registered cell phones, emails, texts, it'll send all of those as you have registered for that. Um, and you can split up the call ba database into whatever you could send a mass message to all of town. If we have a road closed, we can pull that off of a map and just send people in that area. So it, it you know. The, the system is pretty flexible. That's why I recommended it as that as part of this budget. Um, our plan is to start the enrollment push in the coming week. So what this means is the a general database check and information for people to enroll other phone numbers, emails, sign up for all of those things. So what 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 will happen is that 
we will initiate a call out to everybody that is in their core database and they will get that call, be invited to go to our website um, and uh, update and further information um, if they want to add other phone numbers beyond that one. Uh, they'll be advised that if they're getting that call and they have friends and neighbors that haven't gotten the call to encourage them to go to that website and sign up. Um, it, the message also says if you're not, not, not going onto the website uh, because you don't have internet access or are comfortable with it, that you can call here. And so, and we've, it, it, you know, our staff will be set up to know how to input that. Uh, town clerk also offered that mid-month is generally a slower period in their office. So um, she volunteered to have uh, her staff field a number of those calls as people come in to get their information into the system. So um, we aim to be rolling that out this week. Um, um, I'm not really sure if you had considered this. My recollection is we have a election coming up uh, in March. Can we ask? people um, if they want to sign up while they're at the election because it occurs to me that many of the people in town will actually be showing up right in the county um, to get checked off to vote. Um, Just a question. I would be hesitant to commingle it at the registration table. Elsewhere in the gauntlet coming in or in the hallway having a presence to explain mm -hmm. and in fact even having Having a computer set up there might make some sense. Um, How will we staff it, though? Well, we'd have to figure out if we have the capacity to put somebody. Because I think the challenge is in the last there. two elections, we've we've not been able to staff what we're required to staff. You know, that can do outside of the regular duties. Two of us are running, so we can't even be in the building. Um, so I guess I would just be concerned. I mean, I think it's a good idea. I just not. Maybe it's a, maybe what we're like saying we're handing out. We're handing out the town report. We should make sure in the town report it actually has a, a page and it's dedicated to, if you want information, here's how you sign up. I kind of want to put something on top of, there's going to be more people who want that than want the town report. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I, yeah we, we can actually make a sign up flyer that goes on top. So remember, we're trying to give out fewer town reports. And no, that's true. I'm other other flyers, flyers, say, but it should, yeah. We should include it in the town report anyway. So yeah. it's there. But we should put something outside, to your point, outside of it that says, you know, here's a flyer. If you want, you know, if you want to know what's going on, the good, the bad, and the ugly in town. Yeah. You know, here's a way we can notify you. Yeah, I, I was going to try to put together some flyers so we might have them uh, this weekend at the uh, winter fest, winter fest? Uh, for rec commission. So, yeah. some of us will be kicking around there at different times during the day. So, how about using a good write-up for the Hudson Lynchfield News on it? Yes, I will um, ask the reporter to follow who's here tonight covering it to follow right up on oh, that. No, I think no but, but I, I will, I will put write, something together. We could write something in. I, and, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it's, uh, um, I actually, I have some canned information that I'll bundle with that and try to get that. Good. You know, so, you know, I, I realize we're competing tonight. I think there's a Hudson deliberative session tonight. So, to be fair to, to them. Well, there's nothing, there was nothing juicy on the agenda, so. I know. Um, all right, next. All right. Um, I, all right, let me just um, do a quick note, speaking of the town report. Uh, the online version and CDs should be available by the end of this week. Huh? We haven't, I don't think you've received all the submittals yet. Um, I have one submittal I'm waiting for. Yeah? Has it already gone to print? No, but it needs to go to print very soon, or it will be no report submitted for that report. <laughs> if anyone wants to know what that is, that's the Board of Selectmen's report, and I have it in draft, but I've still received no input from anybody else on the board. Do you want it? Why there? would you? You're the chair. We trust <laughs> it, you with that. Do you want input? I guess he wants input. He asked I, for some. I, I, I asked for some, and I asked for some, and I got a couple, you know, this, this, and this, but no content around this, this, and this, and. You asked for ideas, I thought. You didn't ask us to review the report. 
Because I, I haven't reviewed it because I haven't even finished writing it yet. I'm asking for things to put oh, into okay, it. Oh, okay. Because I thought you said you had it finished written and you wanted feedback on the, no, no, the no, writing. No, no, no. I was, if why you, don't I had, you write a draft and give it to us and then we can... Right, exactly. you know, and Rather than coming up with duplicate ideas and a whole bunch of stuff. Why make this difficult on us, John? Yeah. <laughs> John, I will give you... If you would like to share it, an editable Google document. After well, that's this how meeting. I do it. I was hoping. That, I after was hoping this, after this meeting tonight, I will help you edit the said oh. document because I had some content. I'd be happy to offer some. As long as input. I put all my words in, you guys can go. Yeah, looks good. <laughs> no, I will. Well, no, I, I I would be happy to grammatically <laughs> review it for you. The amount of writing I've been doing. Okay, all right. I asked so, about so writing my own. When, when is my drop dead date? That's what I guess I got to know. January tonight. Wednesday. Okay. All right, thank you. January 10th, that would have been... Um, right. That know. was another... <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, we had discussed, or um, John and I had discussed at uh, some point back, maybe in January, um, that as things start piling up in Concord, inviting our delegation to the next meeting, uh, New Hampshire legislative delegation, um, wanted to confirm preceding that idea and then you know, also confirm that if we're doing that, extending an invite to school board budget committee, various other town committees, department heads who may have an interest. Of course, if you, we'd have to move the venue. Well, we've, had, the we've had it here in the past, so they've sat at this table and we filled the room up. But. Yeah, our delegation, our, our legislative delegation is now, really small. Is smaller than it used to be, so. It used to be 13, now it's four. Yeah. Five, if our senator approves. Right. So, you know, four plus the senator is five, so. We could sit, all of us right there at that table or right there on well, the That's exactly what we did. We just filled the room up with. I think it's board. great. I, I think the sooner the better for okay. the invitation. Well, the intent was, the original target was the end of this month. The question will be whether or not we can actually facilitate it the end of this month. But I think well, we should. How about right after town meeting, the, the meeting after town meeting? Yeah, actually, that may, that, may actually, that may make sense only because the, the potential could be new, new committee members, budget committees, new school board, and uh, selectman members. So we can cover that. Like the March 25th? Uh, March, yeah, March, yeah, March 25th. It will give the delegation time to, you know, review a lot of the bills that are filed. It'll give. Does that make sense? It's 25th? What do you guys want? Let's target twenty fifth. Let's get a, let's get a, an invitation get to, to, all, meeting, to all town committees, boards, and then to the, the delegation. Too. I think uh, we'd uh, be rushing it to try to do it. The next yeah, no, probably. I, I, I would suggest yeah. that if you're going to also do that, you invite Carol Zeim, who is the uh, county commissioner representing Litchfield. Okay. That would be a good person because she can talk about the county budget, county sure. issues, and stuff. Although county budget won't be done then, but she can talk about county issues. Okay. No, they certainly more info the better. Yeah, so let's get out there, let's start socializing it, let's see who will come, and then mm -hmm. we gotta move the venue, we'll move the venue, but we'll try to facilitate it here as we have in the past. Okay. Well, okay. at least two of that initial group of five are already here, so and they'll be here for that night too. <laughs> Oh, would you come? <laughs> well, I so so the number the number of you know people we need to see. Is either going to come? So there's only three left. Well, I'll put it this way: I'll be here sitting either on this side or that side. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll be here either way. Hmm. All right, so we'll tie on the 25th of March. We'll get the invites out What's that? as soon as we can. Yep, and uh, we'll go from there. No, so for legislation items. Legislation items. Um, wanted to bring to your attention uh, a couple things out of uh, this most recent legislative bulletin. Uh, that you know, while there's any number of things that could impact us, a couple that kind of caught my attention. I wanted to rise here. Um, first is uh, SB 121 which is a proposal to amend the sharing of the rooms and meals tax. Currently, the allocation is based on the statewide collection and then reallocated out based on population. Uh, this calls for an adjustment of that formula, so 44% of the total uh, would be based on the revenue collected within a municipality, and the remaining 56% would be based on population. 
given the relatively few number of cases we have that charge rooms and meals tax, we will end up with nothing. This would likely mean a further decrease in revenues from the state. Interestingly, as written right now, it has an effective date, if passed, of July 1st, which 2013, which would then re result in less 2013 revenue to the town. Now, to put into context, uh, last year, uh, Rooms and Meals revenue for us was about $369,000. Mm -hmm. So Having that cut by 40% would be big. Yeah, I mean, well, the problem is that it wouldn't, it's not necessarily... I was going to say, it wouldn't be cut It wouldn't be cut that dramatically, but we don't have great numbers at hand because it's not reported as to what's collected so, so in each town. So if, if you think of it, roughly 50% of 300,000 is what, 150. Mm -hmm. Call it 175 because that's 340 or... Three, 370. 370, right. Or whatever. So if, if you think it of 375,000, then you take... Uh, that's your 44% for rough figuring. Then figure out that we've got Vermonto, no hotels, yeah, and you have a little a, a part-time place. Uh, yeah, you, you, you have Woodman's part of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. so, so the bottom line is that you're going to lose about, mm, I would say, somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 of that 170. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, does anyone know was the intent to? The intent give is to the get municipalities the municipalities with the most. Uh, I would be willing to bet dollars to donuts that this is an SB, the Senate bill. It's a Senate bill. Then I'll guarantee you that they're looking. Toward the racetrack, so no, toward, toward, the, toward the Manchester, probably. Sure. Well, Who, who's mean, this prime sponsor? Um, it had a surprising number of sponsors, actually. I'm sure. Um, <coughs> let's see. Let's what, what, what was it? Uh, 121. 121. Thank you. Uh, sponsors include Senator Stiles, Bradley, Woodburn, Carson, Regan, Fuller, Clark. Uh, representatives Khan, Shaw, Rice, Umberger, and Waslaw. Carson, I'm su well, I guess I'm surprised. That's the one from I'm London surprised Dairy? Fuller Clark is in with that bunch. And Portsmouth? Portsmouth? No, no, I understand. I mean, I mean it's it, in that's clearly in Portsmouth's that's interest. A pretty, that's a bipartisan. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty clearly in Portsmouth's interest. But it's mostly, wow. It, yeah, it's mostly in the interest of those that have the most. Um, Facilities that return people, the tax. People that have retail, restaurants, right. or uh, restaurants, hotels. I, I gotta believe there's gonna be a lot of communities that would be impacted by it. Because, there would not. I mean, mean, all the bedroom communities which don't have any anything in it. The, the, the thing that concerns me is those that would gain from it tend to be larger, better right. organized, more vocal communities. I, you know. In my previous life, before serving Litchfield, I would have clearly argued in favor of this because, you know, I made the opposite argument when I was in Littleton, busting our tail, growing downtown, opening new restaurants, bringing in hotels, and we got no direct benefit from our local growth. So I understand why people are advocating for it on the other side. Um, that's, that's the balance that we have here. So, um, you know. I, I raise it because it is a potential issue here. Right. Is this the rec meeting? No. Yeah. Is it tomorrow night? It's tomorrow night, yeah. Uh, uh, no, well, it's actually in the, I think in the back room. Uh, the oh, Winter yeah. Fest yeah. planning. Yeah, so it's in the back probably. It, I just saw Keith come through, so maybe oh, they're probably back open. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Winter Fest, it's not the actual meeting. Yeah. Because the meeting's tomorrow night. <laughs> is, did they list of, uh, do they break out a fiscal impact? No, um, the, the, because the total amounts, the bucket oh, stays right. the same. Varies, yeah. The bucket stays right. the same and just is shuffled. So, you know, this will change the amount each municipality will receive. It will not change the aggregate amount of money distributed. I think it should be based that 44% on the number of cows in the community. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the amount of horses. Yep. You're right, you submit that amendment, I'll co sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> If the two of you do that, oh, I'll go up oh. and testify. <laughs> so anyway, I'm not sure how you want to approach it. Um, it what, has what committees that appear in front of? Senate Ways and Means. Uh, it's at uh, Senate Ways and Means on 
Thursday. Tuesday the 12th. Tuesday. Oh, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, yes. Whoa. Shot notice, huh, Frank? Hmm. Well, Frank would already know about it. You'll be there, right? You better be. I can't. I don't think so. We only have two pizza places that other ones I, I, I mean, this, I mean, this, I, this I, will impact us. I mean, <clears throat> especially with doing it, it becomes effective middle of the year. We have no way to even. It's going to pass the Senate right. before it comes to the House. The Senate isn't going to care. Right. Right. I so. mean, so they're going to do, and the only way you're going to stop it is at the House. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So I think keep an eye on it at this point. I think the, mm. you know, until we get, because the. <clears throat> I don't think wooden you know, are open uh, again. Yeah. I, I think you're right that the place to raise the concerns more realistically is going to be in the House. Yeah, I'm planning on it. I heard they were. Because. Because. So anyway. So. Is so poor. Um, HB 142, who sponsored that? What are you doing? Uh, HB 142, this is a proposal to change the number of hours a retiree from the participating in the New Hampshire retirement system can work from 32 to 24 per week. Oh, it's kind of back again. Um, as knowing, you know, understanding how we staff some of our key positions, <laughs> um, this would have a, a fairly devastating effect on the way we offer current uh, detective school resource officer services, fire Our chief, chief. Mm -hmm. highway maintenance, oh, yeah. all of whom we've tap danced around to make the 32 work. Mm -hmm. 32 isn't great, especially with the new restriction that it's 32 per week and it's across all eligible employers. We're making it work. Um, 24 makes it almost unworkable for us. Yeah. Um, give me a sec. Lambert, Boehm. No. Oh. <laughs> Byron. <laughs> well, it's the kind um, of legislation Byron might co sponsor, but. Really? Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. kidding. No, no, sorry. That He's was. going to accuse me first. Sorry. Um, I typed the wrong number in and that was a problem. Hold on a sec. Can't be 142. Now all of a sudden that I'm looking something, you all fall silent. Well, I, if you want to <laughs> update the minutes, we'll look for that. I was like, I just mm -hmm. want to. Yeah, why don't we approve the minutes? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. 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 <coughs> this is the update on the, uh, minutes. Well, the minutes are already. 342. 342. Will that have any effect on our employees, like at the incinerator? This way? would affect almost a lot of them. This would, I, this would be, in fact, six employees I can think of right back. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it wouldn't impact the employees at the incinerator because they're not retired. No, but no. It, 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 only, one of them only, is. One is. is okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Jim is. Yeah. yeah, Jim is. But it won't affect him because he only works like 12 hours a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're, not pushing, we're not pushing the same limits. But I mean, fire I. Fire chief. You know, fire chief well, detective. Fire chief doesn't work that many, does he? No. Yeah. He's only eligible. Well, he's only working 24, but. The problem is he's working. He's but but working he re you know, re remember part of the package that was appealing when to to us was that he could work for us. He worked. We're targeting around twenty four. Oh yeah, for Bedford he's also, too. He also works in Bedford. He also yeah. teaches at the academy. Yeah, which means all of those are eligible. Oh for, wow! So, so he's probably working mm -hmm. his full thirty two. Oh, I bet you he's working more than that. Um, oh yeah, and he's mm. probably working more than. So right? okay, uh, this is from Rep uh, Representative Sullivan. Manchester? D. Sullivan. Oh, no. Hillsborough 42. So, um, one, one sponsor? One sponsor. No co sponsors. No co sponsors. Uh, You're yeah. going to put your name on it, George? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's, what's the bill number? Uh, bill's, bill's 342. Now, this has a hearing on Thursday. In front of uh, municipal county? Nope. Um, House Executive Indiana. Departments and Administration. We know Do we know else. anyone on that committee? What? <laughs> Representative D. Sullivan is a Democrat or a Republican? I, I don't on know. Committee of the no, it matters if you're strategizing. Come on. It's an L. All right. But, but anyway, I mean, real concern for us, on. I guess I'm going to look to committee member. Is it, are, you know, input from us? Yes, no. With regard to this one? With regard to this one. Yeah, I think if we, gotta, if we have to send something, I mean, we shouldn't. 
enable our representatives to bring voice to the concern, right? I mean, how, how can we not say something about it? We run our town with retirees. Well, I can't say anything about it when it comes in front of the committee on Thursday. In Why? Because he's on the committee. Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, during you're not allowed to debate the pros and cons of an issue during a committee hearing on a bill. Oh. You're only allowed to ask questions. Oh, That's okay. number one. Number two, if I get out, get off the committee to go testify, then rightly so, I probably can't go on the committee and vote on it. Yeah. That well, makes well, good. Sense. Considering the sponsor also sits on the committee, then that <laughs> removes one committee vote for it. Hmm. Yeah, but that worries me because I know that committee member. Oh. Doesn't so what, what, what would be appropriate for this board to do then? Send a letter up to the committee and say, you know, <coughs> concerns or? The biggest impact is not going to be a letter. The biggest impact will be, uh, I mean, having somebody testify. What time? Uh, let me look at the. Let me look at the calendar. If it's Thursday, it's probably the afternoon. It's probably. Because uh, the governor's giving her. her uh, state of the state. State of the, uh, her budget at ten. How can Thursday's she... Valentine's Day, right? Yes. Mm hmm How can what? I was gonna say, how can she give a state of our budget? Or she's only been in office how long now? They start the budget before she got into office. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Uh, it is. Oh, um, oh, it is. Uh, one fifth. It is slated for one fifteen. Where is it on the agenda? Is it close to the first item, or is it? Uh, no, the, it is. Uh, yes, the, the the first item they're going to hear that day is a bill establishing Franklin Pierce Day. I'm okay. hoping that that does not take longer than the fifteen minutes they've allocated for it. Well. We need to go through all of the accomplishments of Franklin Pierce. So, <laughs> what will you do with that, the remaining that, ten minutes? That, that could take <laughs> that could take thirty, forty minutes. Um. So anyway, um, his son was killed in a train accident. By the way, just to let you know. Really? I didn't know that. Are you making that up? No. Look up his biography. I can't. My computer is going really slowly because I'm trying to look up this bill. Okay. So and my browser says, "Oh snap!" So you're on the committee, so you can't say anything. You'll listen. And George, you're thinking Thursday. What time? One fifteen. One fifteen. Now either either that or have Jason come up and testify. Well, I was going to suggest the other side of it. From a minute, you know, have if, if you're able to go up and testify on behalf of the town. Um, I'll try not to make you laugh. Oh my God. It's bad That's enough sitting good. here. Um, yeah, I can. I have. I have something else scheduled that day that I'll push. I'll try to push off another month. Um, because I, I just was pulling up. I was hoping that the timing would work. But I mean, you can, I have to you be can, on the other side of Concord. You can at present 1 to the committee the, what the impact would be to a community of our site. You know what the employees are. What we're using them for. There's a there's a, there's a huge. There could be a huge impact <coughs> to us mm -hmm. if this was to go through. So. Okay. I, yeah. I mean, I'm and I can fill you in some details on what I suspect is the background on this. Okay. okay. All right. Well, so we have a plan. Okay. So then I will plan on doing that then. And and George doesn't. I will. Doesn't go there. You from going well. too. Um, all right. Next up is the AED status. Uh, AED status. Um, I I spoke to uh, actually last week. I think I I spoke to Fire Chief and uh, Paramedic Ray about this. They had done the homework. I think we're going to initiate the order for two of them. For uh, the incinerator. Or we, we had one for the incinerator, which we encumbered funds for, and one that we had received a donation for for Town Hall. So we're gonna. Um, so it just was teeing up the paperwork and get it done. Um, Maybe another week by the. Do we need to accept that donation for talent? We've already we done already that. Did that. Yeah, we did that. We, we already did that. that. So, um, and appropriated it for that purpose. So it's just hanging out there to do that. So, um, okay. and so, um, so by next meeting, we should have either ordered and purchased and waiting from the ship or something like that. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I, Jim's away at training this week, so it'll probably need to be picked up next week. Um, the uh, insurance pools piece, uh, I spoke with Jay Hodes about it uh, and realized that 
Um, the conversations and paper exchange that David and I had was largely over the phone, so I'm, I told Jay that I put together the paperwork trail that I had put together before. So I'm going to send that to him and we're going to follow up. Remember, the, the concern here was that you know, there's trailing amounts of funds that have not, that um, in both of the pools that we've participated in, that um, were, have not been committed back to us yet. Um, you know, parts of, there is part of the LGC uh, health insurance pool that is sort of in limbo right now because they've returned some, but there's a remainder that uh, the Secretary of State's hearing officer feels <coughs> should be returned. Uh, Primex has returned mem uh, funds in one of their pools, um, workers' comp, for which we are getting funds. Um, and they have not returned any funds in any of the other pools. Remember, we used to participate for them with insurance. So, but there was also the cutoff date. I believe the cutoff date was two thousand five. Wow. Yeah, oh, for for the the settlement that Primex had showed through customers through two thousand nine. Was it nine? Yeah, because and, and one of the things I wanted to do was see should we go back further. Yeah, because we were we were. Um, customers of Primex through 10, I believe. So, I'm just saying, that yep. if they've been collecting excessive funds mm -hmm. for a longer period of time, we should be going back for that, mm -hmm. which is outside the scope of the settlement. <coughs> that's, my, that's my point. Okay. Do you understand what I, I mean? I do. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so, in gathering those pieces together. So you'll bring Jay up to speed. I'm gonna bring Jay up to speed. I'll have an update for you next meeting. Um, All right. Does that answer the question? Well, next week, maybe. Well, next yeah. meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Once we get Jay back up to speed. Yeah. All right. The next one's minutes out. So um, over the last several months, the minutes online have been getting behind. Um, we have finished the transition over to the new system, and our minutes are now 100% up to date for all committees and boards that submit electronic minutes. Um, we, the office, we have a procedure now in place that are getting a little easier to post. But I think we're, um, we're in good shape. I know I sent an email. I, I, I know, Frank, you've inquired several times. I've sent you an email directly. But um, if you go to the town website, there's a meeting minutes tab. You can sort on that and all the boards are listed. And then you'll, the rest of it's sorted by dates and so on. So it's all there. Um, I think the only the only real open issue we have right now is still the non-publics that went expired that go public. We have an inventory of all those. I'm sorting through those now, trying to get them reconverted and put those up also, just trying to figure out what's the best way to post those <coughs> as far as how to intermix them with meetings. But, um, we'll do that. You looking for Winterfest? Yep. It's down the hall. <laughs> Take care. On the right. Yeah. Right on. Um, so I think we're we're looking pretty good. Um, the only thing I would say about the only additional thing I'll say about minutes, typically minutes are being published if they are in draft format. If I get them in draft format, but if I don't get them in draft format, they don't go to the next been approved. I've encouraged all boards to submit them in draft, which is watermark as draft, and as the new ones get put out there. Is replace it and I put those up instead. Um, but <coughs> that's a little, been a little harder to kind of get through. But once they've been approved, they've been definitely been posted. <coughs> okay. Right. Any questions? Okay. Hearing none. Next up, you all set, Chase? I'm all set. All right. Next up, selectman reports. I will just throw out mine right real quick. Um, Recreation Commission meets tomorrow night. They're actually meeting tonight for the Winterfest kind of planning. Winterfest starts on Friday the 15th, goes into the 16th, several events. You'll see signs posted around the town. Um, if you're looking for more information about it, go to litchfieldrec.com, which is their recreation website. And they have a list of uh, activities and events that are occurring during the next couple of days over, over that period of time. That's, that's my update. Anybody else? I had the conservation meeting last Thursday. We didn't, we had just barely a quorum <clears throat> because they had thought they were changing it and they had temporarily changed it 
but then they went back to the regular date, so okay. nothing outstanding happened. <clears throat> okay. Anybody else? All right, hang on, moving on. Items moved from consent. There were none. Next is other business. Uh, the only open issue, the only other business we have is the one I raised. Uh, I just want to make sure the board's aware. Um, uh, a budget committee council interaction that happened over the last couple of days. We received an email from the school board chair, John York, um, inquiring about um, a deliberate meeting and the meeting that occurred after that, some questions around um, the re-votes that occurred. Uh, we forwarded that to council on behalf of John Hart, the chair of the budget committee, and all that's been um, <coughs> John Hart and they're working through that. I believe the budget committee is actually meeting tomorrow night to kind of clean up anything that's over yeah. on that. Um, I will make one request. I will take the, the, e the initial emails that came across and the council. I will like to have them added to tonight's meeting minutes just, as, just to cover our aspect of it. The Board of Selectmen's involvement has been nothing more than just facilitating the council requests from the budget committee chair. And um, the, bu the, the Board of Selectmen has no decision or comment as far as what's going on there. And I'm sure tomorrow night the budget committee and the school board will resolve that issue. It's very unusual. The attendance was worse this year than previous years, right? Deliberate, for yeah. both of them? Yeah, for both of them, we had, what? Um, and 75 at the school and about 25 for the town? Yeah. yeah, and I think the school, if you add it up, it was probably more. And if you look at the town, I counted people who weren't associated with town government. It was only about 11. Yeah, exactly. And I yeah. think you probably find the same percentage with um, the, the school. school. Yeah. So does anybody have any questions about the budget committee council thing Are we all good oh all you did is take a request yep. and send it to our attorneys and give it back to one of our departments yeah and i also and i also shared an, an opinion that happened last year for the same exact question mm -hmm. so that was the initial over to john hart and then when we got our opinion john hart also received it from myself and i think it all started from the office so the office's involvement has only been facilitating jason has been making sure the stuff gets asked and sent back in a very timely manner and then my obviously my involvement was the initial uh, question and concern that was raised so like that, I'll um, I'll tag the ones that I, I'll tag all the emails associated with it in the train I'll just get it added to the minutes just so that they're part of it okay any other questions nope no okay um, all right next up we have we're going to we have a non-public scheduled so um, I'll make a motion we go into non-public session. Actually, before you take that motion, can I yeah, inject one more thing in the public meeting? Sorry, I should have added this to my report. <coughs> um, yeah, I want to recognize it was uh, a long weekend, particularly for the highway department and their contractors. And we had a lot of continuous hours of dedicated service. And you know, I want to express appreciation to them for having everything under control, um, you know, when, you know, selfishly on my end, I'm teed up to do public information when there's a storm, I had nothing to publicly inform because everything was under control. Yeah, I'm glad you brought That's a great feeling. Yeah, I, I'm glad you brought it up. I actually, uh, I spoke to Jack on, I spoke to Jack Pizzero on Sunday. I texted him on Saturday because when I ventured out after the storm was over, I was amazed at how clear the roads were and how well, of a how, how great of a job he had done, his crew has done. Um, and I think we, you know, we need to recognize that. Traveling outside of this community, the roads were horrible. In this community, they were very good. And uh, considering the, the, the speed of the storm, the amount of snow that fell, you know, hats off. That, that crew did an excellent job. And even tonight, they're out there already tonight. They were up, they already prepped the roads. They were well, they're that moving already. snow now. Yeah, parking. I could hear, I heard the backup horns mm -hmm. <laughs> chime. So, yeah, so obviously, thank you to the road, the road agent and his crew. And, um, well, to all employees, it may have been. Did, did they? We staff up fire or police. We did. Uh, yep. Yep. We, we had. Yep. You know, we we had extra. Um, you know, we had um, coverage available at the station throughout the weekend for the fire department. So, so you know, two teams of two. So we could respond if right. we had. Well, I think any an all overload. emergency management personnel, the road crew. Yep. I think um, it goes without saying that we do appreciate all their efforts, um, especially in. Uh, extra 
uh, ordinary circumstances like we saw over the weekend. Uh, certainly, it's, I appreciate it as a taxpayer, and I certainly appreciate it as a selectman, their efforts, uh, and a lot of times they go unnoticed. Uh, yeah. And um, and I, I think you're right in thanking you. Yep, totally agree. I want to, as you said, thank the fire department, the police department, and the highway department for all the efforts. Um, and as, as uneventful as it was, that's it good. It could have been an event, but that's it wasn't. A good thing. It was a good thing. So, <clears throat> not even a flicker of lights. That means that everybody's prepared. Yeah, but you actually have me to thank for that because I bought a generator. Yeah, <laughs> I've had one too, and I, you know, for many years didn't didn't need it. Now I need it. All right, so we're going to go into. Um, Non-public session per RSA 91A colon three, Roman numeral two, section E, for pending litigation. So moved. Okay. Second it. Okay. Roll, okay. Motion made and seconded. Roll call vote. Mrs. Jewett. Yes. Mr. Byron. Yes. Mr. Lambert. <laughs> yes. Mr. Lanier. Yes. Mr. Brunel. Yes. So we're all in favor. Five zero zero. To go into non-public. We'll just be coming out of non-public to uh, adjourn the public meeting, so we'll say good night. And our next meeting will be February 25th, 6 o'clock Town Hall. Have a great night. Drive carefully. <laughs>